Hello folks, now that Blizzard have finally got round to doing a pass over the BFA raids to make them all soloable, that means that Nihilotha is finally doable even on Mythic difficulty, which means that we can now get on and farm the Mythic raid mount, the Nihilotha Allseer. You don't even need to have a Heart of Azeroth or the old BFA legendary cloak to do it anymore. That doesn't mean that this is a complete cakewalk though. As well as having a lot of health, some of these bosses do still have mechanics that we need to deal with, some of which can be a little bit confusing if you're soloing it, especially if you didn't do the flights when they were current. I did the run in this video on an item level 520 tank character and it still took me little over an hour to do. Now obviously in the war within and beyond this will get a lot faster, but in the meantime, there is a skip, albeit that does require 5 full clears to unlock and I will explain that skip as we go along. If you're doing this in Dragonflight, I recommend being at least item level 480 and if you're in a squishy class like a mage or a shadow police, you'll probably want to be at least 500. Now this raid has an unusual mechanic where it alternates between the Veil of Eternal Blossoms in Pedaria and Aldum and Kalimdor on a weekly basis. To be able to access the raid at all, you do need to unlock the BFA 8.3 content. I'm not going to go into that here as it's a bit involved, but I will put a link to a Wowhead mini guide that covers most of how to do it in the description to the video. Once you do have it unlocked, to find out where the raid entrance is, just go to the Kul Tiris or Zandalar on the main map, then click on the I symbol repeatedly to swap between the two zones and look for the one that has the Black Empire Assault. So now let's get into the bosses. First up is Rathian. Now Rathian has a very strangely high health pool for a first boss and he can take you a while to burn him down. Every so often he takes off and flies to a new location and then coats the floor in fire. That fire no longer does much damage so you can just run over and keep damaging the boss. Every second time he flies off he will become immune. Now, if you do get that far before you kill him, there's not much you can do but wait until his shields drops. But if you do get bored, you can stand in one of the circles. That'll give you a buff that'll allow you to destroy the spikes that appear in this phase. It's not necessary to do that. I just did that when I was recording this video, mostly just to keep myself from getting bored while I waited for his shield to drop. After Rathian, I take the left path over towards Mott. This is slightly faster than going to the right first, at least in terms of the time it takes you to walk through the raid. Mott isn't a particularly hard boss to do, but he does have mechanics that involve managing his mana to prolong the fight long enough to defeat him. Those mechanics you can't really do if you're soloing it, which means that his enraged timer, which is effectively still a one-shot, can be very tight if you're low-geared in Dragonflight. Anyways, when you do fight him, he'll drop pools on the ground that will silence you. You just need to move out of those. And when he turns to stone, you can actually just stand around and wait for his cast to end. But if you get bored, you can try and break his stone form, which will speed the fight up a little by doing damage to it. If you do do that, you'll want to try and catch all of the balls that come towards him during that phase before they reach him, as if he eats those balls, it will make it harder to break his stone form. After Mott, we head out from the other exit from the one that we came in and we head over to Skitra. Now this boss is honestly actually pretty easy. It has a mechanic where the boss spawns a bunch of illusions. Now if you have more than one player in your group, the way to deal with this is that players will get split with two different coloured debuffs and those different debuffs will cause you to see different illusions, but everyone will see Skitra. So all you need to do is to work out which version is being seen by people with each debuff, and that's the correct one to attack. Now obviously, if you're solo, you really can't do that, so in that case, all you have to do is to kill them all one by one until you find the right one. There's actually plenty of time to do this, so don't really worry about that, just head around, do damage, until you get the boss dead. After this, we head back to the middle corridor and we take the lift up to the main area. Now, we're going to head down into this orifice first and on to Shadar. And Shadar, honestly, is one of the simpler fights. Just zug zug and kill the boss. Next up is Drestagath, and this is one of the more involved bosses mechanically. Now, the way this boss works is that the boss will heal any of the damage that you do to him. So in order to kill the boss, what you need to do is to kill one of the tentacles in the room and then pick up one of the purple balls that the tentacles drop when they die. 
That ball will give you a buff that will allow you to do unhealable damage. Once the buff drops off, you just repeat that process of killing tentacles, picking up the ball to get the buff until the boss is defeated. Next up, we have Ilganoth, and I've got a bit of bad news for you. You're going to need to kill him four times. Anyway, you start the fight on Ilganoth, and from time to time, he will target you with an ability that will drop a silence pool under you. Now, if you move, you'll spread this pool about. That's not really an issue for ranged players, but for melee, you quickly run out of space around the boss. So what I recommend you do is you stand still until the dark beam that creates the pool stops and then move. You will lose a bit of DPS going that way, but it will make it a lot easier later on in the fight. Once Elganoth dies, all you need to do is to run over to one of the three organs in the wall and defeat that organ. That will make Elganoth respawn. And then the fight is basically simply repeating that, kill Elganoth, kill one of the organs until all the organs are gone, and then you defeat Elganoth one more time to beat the fight. Once Elganoth is down, this gold ball will spawn. Clicking it once, and then once the ball fully opens up and it becomes clickable again, click it again, and that will give you fast travel back up to the main area. Into the next wing along, and it's off to Dark Inquisitor Zanesh. Now, in this fight, you're going to leave Azshara completely alone. She's not part of the fight at all. The boss is actually much smaller, and it's also super simple. You just stand there and defeat them, and job done. Next up is Vexiona. I found that when I got to the last phase in this fight, that even in a tank character, I was taking very heavy damage, and I suspect that you might struggle a bit in a squishy class with low self-sustain. For example, if you were doing a Shadow Police, you might want to switch to Discipline. Either ways, I do recommend you do this on a fully geared character or you might have a bit of a bad time. Now, the Vexiona fight itself is actually pretty straightforward. You just basically do damage to the boss. When she takes off to do these strafing runs across the raid, the pools that she drops really don't do a lot of damage anymore, so you don't really need to worry about them. It's not until that final third phase where you really start to see the damage input coming up. And that bit is honestly then just a bit of a race against her time to try and take her down before she takes you out. After the fight, again, you'll get one of those golden balls. You can use that to teleport back to the middle. On to the next wing, and we have Hive Mind. Now, Hive Mind is a council fight. Its original mechanics have been thankfully adjusted by Blizzard. Originally, what you had to do was the tanks had to alternate between fighting the, the two bosses together and keeping them apart. But they no longer get the buffs anymore when you do it wrong, so it's pretty easy just to keep them together, which obviously is useful if you're soloing it. One thing to be aware of is that the bosses still do have to die at about the same time. If one is dead for too long with the other one alive, it will get resurrected to 100%. I actually zoned out when I was doing this fight, when I was recording the video. So, yep, I managed to make that mistake. So, I suggest you don't. Up to Radin, and this fight is now quite easy. It did originally have a mechanic where the boss's target would get a stacking debuff that eventually took your health pool down to 1 HP where you'd get one shot, but that's thankfully removed. So again, it's another just zug zug and you're done. And then, yep, again, onto the gold ball to get back down to the main area. Now we can head off to the final area. On arriving in that final area, you need to speak to Rathian to get the ads and the boss to spawn. Now, if this is your second time through, after you clear the area of the ads, Rathian will offer you the skip quest to pick up. That skip quest isn't available until you've killed Nizoth at least once, so you can't get it in your first run through, and you do need to wait until the next reset before you can actually get it, which is a bit confusing and also a bit annoying. That quest requires four full clears on top of the two you already did to get to the quest, so it does take a while to get it. Once you do get the skip quest, you only need to do three bosses, Rathian and the final two, which are Carapace and Nizoth. Now, both of these final bosses are quite involved mechanically, but we'll get started with Carapace first. Now, I personally find that as well as having to wait a bit for the RP before Carapace becomes attackable, there's actually quite a long wait where he just seems to do nothing. So don't worry if the thing looks a bit broken or like it's not going to spawn. Just be patient and he will become active. 
Now, when this fight was current, there was a mind control mechanic that required you to wear the 8.3 legendary cloak. Those mind control mechanics have been removed, so you no longer need to use the cloak, and you can also ignore the extra action buttons that were part of this mechanic. And this advice applies to both of the final two bosses. Now, phase one of Carapace is easy enough. Just damage a boss and ignore everything else. There's no need to get rid of the tentacles, but do try to avoid being hit by them. So you'll look for the shadows on the ground that show you where they're going to fall. When the boss gets a bit bored with you, he'll move into the second area. And here he gets an absorb shield, which means you won't be able to damage him. What you need to do is to go up the ramps on both sides and kill these things that are growing out of the wall. The stuff in the ground just slows you down, so you will need to kill those growths in the ground to remove them or use an ability that negates movement impairing effect. Now, once you get rid of the growths, depending on how much damage you've done, either Carapace will come up and start attacking to you, in which case you need to do damage, or if you did enough damage up front, he might just move straight on to the final area. Now, if neither of that happens when you clear the gross, you've probably just missed one of the gross, which is actually easy to do. I find myself missing one in probably 50% of my runs. Once you do get into that final area, yeah, you guessed it, you can now just zog zog the boss until he's defeated. Now, by the time you get here, you've probably noticed that there's a fair bit of unscapable RP in this raid. And the Zoth is actually no exception to that. So you do have to wait quite a while while that RP runs through before he eventually spawns and then later on becomes unattackable. So if you're wondering why you can't attack him, just wait for that RP to finish. Now, I have found that it can very occasionally bug out and never become attackable. So if you find yourself waiting, say, more than maybe 30 seconds to a minute with no RP, just leave the area through the green portal and then re-enter the raid without resetting it. That bit's really important. And that usually fixes it and then you'll get to be able to fight him. Now, to start the fight, you just hit Nazoth. Now, you'll notice right away that he's also shielded and you don't actually do any damage to him. So what you need to do is to kill three of the basher tentacles. That's the really big ones. Now, you will have to wait a little bit after killing the first two before number three spawns, but don't worry about that. Just be patient. After you've killed those three, this pool will spawn in the ground and you need to stand in it and you'll be ported to the other realm. In the other realm, what you have to do here is to kill Psychus. Now, Psychus spawns with a huge damage reduction, which at least in Dragonflight is strong enough that even being fully geared, it's too much to defeat him before he enraged. And if he does enrage, that completely breaks the fight. So what you have to do here is to drag him onto the little tentacles and then kill the tentacle with Psychus standing on it. Each time you do that with a tentacle, it removes one stack of his debuff and that allows him to take more damage. So just keep dragging them onto the little tentacles and then killing the tentacles. I was able to focus Psychus and just cleave onto the tentacles with the AoE abilities and after about killing about four or five, he was taking enough damage that I could defeat him. Once Psychus is down, the Zoss shield drops and you can finally do some more damage to the boss. Once the shield goes back up, you basically just have to repeat that phase again. Kill the bashers three times, go down to Psychus, and then back to Nazoth. After you deal with Psychus a second time, the good news is that the shield will remain down for a lot longer. So don't be disheartened by how little damage you manage to do with the first time the shield drops. Now, when the shield goes up the next time, you'll now get the secret mythic only phase. For this, look for the golden door kind of portal thing and click on it. Then you just kill the ad that's bothering Magni and Mother and then click in the portal to go back again. And now, finally, you'll be able to just burn the Zoth down for that 1% chance on the mount. Good luck with that. Now, it's possible in the War Within and Beyond, some of these phases with Nazoth might be skipped when you're able to do some extra damage. So don't be super surprised if some of the things I've shown in this video get missed out. But... I have a feeling that it probably won't all be skippable. Overall, this raid kind of has some Spine of Deathwing vibes for me in terms of the number of mechanics that you'll probably still have to deal with even like in 10 years in the future.
Now, as well as the chance at the mount and a ton of transmog, I was also able to sell the soulbound gear that dropped for two and a half thousand gold, which takes us back to the kind of gold we used to get from doing the old raids prior to the Shadowlands level squiz. So I have a feeling that in the latter part of the war within, where doing these raids become a lot faster, this could become a nice bit of a raw gold farm. Anyway, that's Nyalotha in a nutshell. But what about all of you? Are you excited to finally be able to farm this mount? Are you just looking for something to do at the end of the expansion? Or do you have any other tips or tricks that I missed out? Let us know in the comments down below. And if you found this video even remotely useful, please do let both me and the YouTube algorithm know by hitting that like icon. And if you want to support my channel, by far the best way to do that is by subscribing and hitting that bell icon so that you get notified whenever a new video goes live. I'll be doing lots more of these guides in the future. That's all for now. Thanks for watching.